welcome be welcome back to the fourth week of this course on the design of steel connections um in this week we are going to talk about different types of moment and rigid connections in the previous week we uh, uh, we discussed in detail the different types of simple or shear connections and the different possibilities that exist for moment connections the basic configurations we discussed in this week we will go into the design examples and the design considerations for such connections so the first part of this week's lectures would include non ductile connections or connections which are a part of a non ductile frames so the non ductile frames are typically the ones which are not required to be designed for earthquake loading conditions because in earthquake loading conditions we have to uh, ensure that the connections behave in a ductile manner now just to give you some background for regular steel structures we follow is 800 likewise for regular concrete structures reinforced concrete structures we follow is 456 however when it comes to the ductile detailing of reinforced concrete structures which is basically again for designing of rc structures for earthquakes we follow is 13920 right and that uh, particular document has been in practice in circulation for quite a while however for steel uh, design design of steel structures and especially the 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 detailing requirements for steel connections for ductile performance uh, there is no such code in practice there is one code one draft code which is being circulated among the stakeholders and comments are invited however there is no such code in practice as of today and uh, is 800 does provide us the design guidelines but it does not provide us the detailing provisions for such connections so we will talk about some of those aspects uh, following some of the international codes but for the time being we will keep our focus on regular non ductile framing requirements and when we uh, when do we need non ductile requirements that we will discuss when we discuss the requirements of ductile frames so um, in the previous class we had seen a couple of different types of uh, rigid connections um one configuration was where we used an end plate the end plate was welded to the beam and then it was bolted to the column flange other alternative was to use two t stubs right which was also behave which would behave in somewhat similar fashion as an end plate and then the completely different variety of uh, such kind of connections was the one where we directly weld the flange of the beam to the column or sometimes we may have we may have to use a cover plate to weld the beam to the column so the first variety which we are going to discuss today is the one where we use an end plate so there are several different possibilities within the domain within the um, the area of uh, end plate connection so here you see three different configurations in the first configuration what you see here is the one where the end plate is relatively short so it is not extending beyond the beam depth and all the bolts that are provided are only provided within the depth of the beam and in such a connection um, again the moment will be transferred uh, through these bolts so one of the ends will be under bearing the other one will be pulling and these bolts will be transferring the force and you have to make sure that this end plate is stiff enough and strong enough so that it can transfer the same amount of moment over a smaller lever arm another alternative is typically if the moment depending on the direction of the moment typically if the moment is of this type this type wherein it uh, wants to bend in clockwise direction the beam wants to bend in clockwise direction then the lower flange of the beam will be in compression and the top flange will be in tension and if that is the case typically we need to count on the performance of bolts on the top end side and therefore sometimes the end plate may be extended more to the top end side and we may provide a few extra bolts on that side to increase the lever arm there can be other alternative where we can increase the uh, the length of the plate near the bottom flange of the beam however in such a case the we have to make sure that uh, the end plate does not bend under that load and therefore we may have to provide a stiffener like the one that is shown here which is typically known as honged connection in this portion is called a honge which basically provides the stiffness the required stiffness to this plate which does not allow it to bend therefore we can increase the lever arm so this increase in the lever arm may be required for that purpose 
So generally the idea is that in all these connections, the end plate would be welded to the beam directly. And this would be done at the shop. And then the entire setup would be brought to the site. And then at the site in the field, the beam along with the end connection would be aligned with the column. And then these bolts will be placed. Because of the presence of these bolts, bolts are more elastic or they have longer length than the welds and therefore these connections are typically more flexible as compared to the connection where the beam is directly welded into the column. But they provide this option that these uh, uh, connections can be opened and investigated at a later stage. In such uh, connections, the idea is that whenever whatever is the shear force demand, that will be transferred directly through the shear force that is acting at each bolt. So bolts will be participating in shear to resist the shear force demand on the beam and the bolts will be going in tension to resist the bending moment demand. So of course bolt cannot resist compression. So when whenever there is a compression demand that will be uh, handled directly through bearing. So for example in these cases the bottom flange of the beam which is the, the bottom most part that is the haunch will be bearing against the column and then <clears throat> all the bolts will be in tension. And that's how a lever arm will be developed. Whenever we extend the, 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 uh, the end plate slightly above the, call, uh, above the top flange of the beam, any bolts that we provide here, since if we are not providing any stiffener such as haunches or anything like that, the end, uh, the end plate tends to bend because of this force that is acting on it because of the top bolt and because of the possible bending of this uh, end plate the force demand on this top bolt may not be as much as the force demand in the other bolts or it does not increase proportionally um, throughout right so the assumption of plane section remaining plane for this connection may not be true and certain assumptions or certain approximate assumptions can be made to calculate the force demand in these bolts as I had mentioned before, the compression is typically concentrated at the lowest most point, so which would be at the bottom flange in these two cases and it will be the bottom of the haunch in this case. And if, since that becomes the pivot point, so we can assume we can imagine that if this is the pivot point and the bolt, uh, sorry, and if the connection is tending to open in this way and if this connection behaves or this end plate behaves like a rigid plate in that case we would have elongation in these bolts so all these bolts will be in tension but the elongation of each bolt will be proportional to the distance from the pivot point however that may not be the case for the bolts that are provided beyond the top flange so in the extended part of the end plate that may not be the case because this portion of the end plate may bend a little bit because of the high actual high bending moment demands another major aspect of these connections is the provision of these continuity plates or stiffeners horizontal diagonal stiffeners or doubler plate in such connections whenever we have this kind of connections and if there is a point where the uh, flange is going to bear against the the column flange most likely it will introduce very large stresses in this neighborhood and there are different types of failures that are possible primary ones are the bear, the, the the crippling failure of the beam web and the local buckling of the beam web these types of failures can be prevented by providing uh, horizontal stiffeners which are also sometimes referred to as continuity plates so basically the idea here is that whatever force is being applied that can be transferred to the other end and if there is another connection another beam on the other side that force can be transferred all the way to the other beam um, instead of this web resisting the entire force. Also, whenever we have this kind of loading acting on this and there is a large moment demand, that requires a large shear resistance from the beam and from the column web. Sometimes the column web may not have sufficient strength available and it can undergo plastic deformations or buckling. In order to prevent that, we can either provide a diagonal stiffener which basically increases its shear resistance or sometimes we provide a, uh, an additional doubler plate or a web plate as shown here. 
such type of connections are quite common in PEB construction. So PEB construction, uh, whenever we have rafters in the structure, typically we have these end plates welded to the sections. They are brought to the site and then they are bolted together using such bolts. Now look, let us look at the different components that are uh, part of a typical end plate connection and how these components are required to be designed. Here is a diagram of a typical end plate connection. Um, this is basically an extended end plate connection, but that hardly matters. So, the as we have already understood the mechanism, the pivot point will be somewhere here, and individual bolts here will be resisting the force in proportional to their distance from the pivot point. So, we can assume the pivot point to be at the bottom flange, right at the centroid of the bottom flange. And then we can calculate the strain developing in each of these bolts. So, in a, so basically, these bolts, first of all, they, these bolts need to be designed for the combined shear force that would be acting on it because of the actual uh, because of the shear force demand on the beam. And in addition to that, they will also be resisting the tension force demand as shown here. Right. So we can we typically assume the shear force demand on each bolt to be equal because we can assume that this these plates are much more stiff than the overall shear stiffness of all the bolts combined and as a result um, they can be considered as rigid planes and they can be considered to be not deforming while the bolts are deforming in shear. So bolts have to be designed for the combined tension and shear. In addition to that if it is an extended end plate it, it is subjected to large bending moment demand and the end plate also needs to be designed for that demand. If I may show this in another plane. So if I take another view, which is basically I'm looking from this side. So I've got this end plate and then there is beam, which is welded to the end plate. So this weld is typically done in form of a fillet weld, which runs all around the beam. So we will follow the, the detailing requirements. We can weld the flanges on all sides and then after some discontinuity we can weld the web and then also the flanges. So this is this these will be the locations of the fillet welds that we may need to provide and we need to make sure that these fillet welds which are welding which are joining the beam to the end plate are strong enough to transfer the force the required forces. That is the third point here. Uh, I missed the second point. So in this particular scenario, you might again notice that if I have end plate like this, which is welded to the beam, which is shown here. And if we have some bolts located here, and maybe there are other bolts along the way. And when this top flange is pulling out, is moving in out of the plane direction outward, these bolts are holding it back and again coming back to the plane what we may anticipate what we may expect is that because of this joining of this flanges of this beam this end plate may deform in this way right and these bolts are holding it back and this top flange of the beam is pulling it in this side and we may have to design this cross section of the end plate for the maximum bending moment demand, which will be basically equal to the force in the bolt multiplied by this lever arm, right? That will be the bending moment demand and this plate needs to be designed for that. Now, in addition to these, these are major, major, uh, majorly a part of the connection, but also we should be mindful that the column itself, which might have been safe earlier, because of this additional concentrated forces that are acting at the column web in this region, this column may have to be strengthened around these areas. There may be a pull force or there might be a push force. And in either case, we have to strengthen it. So the possibility of web crippling or column web buckling, those are very much real and they have to be uh, prevented. And for that, we need to provide lateral or horizontal stiffeners and in addition to that, if there is a large shear force demand that is calculated 
on the column web and if the column web does not have enough capacity we may provide diagonal stiffeners or doubler plates so these are the components that need to be designed in a typical end plate rigid connection 